Are you ready? Hey, hi. Um, my name is Co Carnage on Twitch TV, and um, recently I've been asked a lot of times to make some tutorials. So this is the first of a three-part series in which I kind of go over um, OBS, uh, my green screen, which is why there's no background behind me right now, and Mumble, which helps with my auto attu uh, attenuation. And I'll kind of show you guys how that works in a minute. So the first thing I'm going to cover real quick is um, OBS. So a lot of people ask me all the time how OBS works and what exactly it is. So I was relatively new to this recently as well. Um, and I'll just kind of show you guys where to get started. So first of all, I'm going to show you guys my settings, most importantly. Um, I'm, I have 30 down, 5 up. So what you want to do is, you, this is, this is what's going to take a little bit of work on your side. You are going to need to find the exact numbers that work for you. For me, my max bit rate sitting at around 1800 is great. And I use a custom buffer so I can have some backed up because my internet has this um, nasty potential, as many of you know, to dip at times. So if you give yourself a little bit of buffer, sometimes it can help with that. Um, the quality balance is something else you can adjust. If you start having major issues at higher quality, you can bounce this down. I found 8 to be a relatively good place um, with, with what I'm doing. Audio, you can kind of leave alone at AAC 8 and 128. That should, be, that should be good for most people. Um, in broadcast settings, you want to make sure you have live stream. And let me keep in mind, this is for, uh, for Twitch.tv. There are different settings for different providers. For Twitch.tv, you want to live stream. Twitch TV, Justin TV. Um, the server, this is going to be a bit interesting. There's an application you can download, and I'll try to get this in the description, that will ping every single Twitch server and tell you which one is the best for you. It really depends on where you are, um, on which server you want to use. So it is important to figure out which one is good. Now I'm on this kind of notorious one called VA Secondary, which uh, is quote unquote known to have issues with some people and the performance of the stream. Um, specifically, it can add some jitters and, and tears and stuff that can be kind of helped if people pause the stream for about 30 seconds and, and kind of let it catch up almost. I have noticed that if I switch servers, my performance to the server will go down a little bit, but I find that a lot less people complain about my stream lagging. So it's kind of a trade-off and one of those things you may have to play with. Now, this is really important. This is your stream key. If you don't properly get this in here, you will never stream on Twitch. And basically, inside of Twitch, there's a, um, there's a, a, a page that will give you a long, randomly generated key, letters and numbers. You can't miss it when you find it. It's, it's basically in the, the how to start streaming section on the main Twitch page. Everyone's is unique, and it's basically your key to get on the server. So this is the kind of thing that you'll need to have. And uh, I'll also see if I can get a link down there in the description. Um, on where you can just kind of click to see that key for yourself. Um, auto reconnect, this is again a preference. I turn it on um, as I huh, like to disconnect randomly at times. Um, you can set this for any amount of seconds. Anything below 10, usually your connection won't be dead enough to reconnect. I've tried lower seconds and even if my internet's completely fine, it has problems reconnecting. So I've kind of set it around uh, 10. Delay, um, this is really important if you're doing any competitive streaming. Um, the delay is your delay. That's that's how long it's going to wait before broadcasting the image to Twitch. I do not use a delay, and I have not yet, and honestly don't plan to, um, until you know I get to a point where it matters. So, but that's that's where you would get that done. Now, I just had a very helpful member of the community here, your Royce, tell me that the web page, just in case this doesn't make it to the bottom, for that stream key, is Twitch.tv/broadcast. And then you will click the show key button. And as long as you're logged into your account, that will then get that key that you need to input here. So moving on, um, the next, I don't want to say much, no. The next setting, now this is very important stuff. First of all, you need to pick if you have multiple cards, which one it is. Second, this is your streaming resolution. This is what people are going to see on Twitch. Now I use a 19 inch monitor. Um, so my native resolution is actually 1900 by 1200. But you see, I don't want to stream in a funky streaming number. I don't want to stream in 800p. So what I do is I actually stream at 1080, and then I lock my games to 1080 as well. That also allows for a perfect ratio downscale to 720, which is something a lot of people look for. And that's basically what I use for my stream. 
Um, FPS, again, you see a lot of streams with FPS advertisements at the top. This is where you change that. This heavily depends on your connection. And I've, I've kind of felt, I've found a nice area with 30. And filtering, I always use by linear, although again, you, you can play with these depending on how good your connection is. If you're in Norway or Finland or something, then you know, you could probably, probably get this stuff up pretty high. Um, audio, um, the only kind of stuff here, uh, now a lot of people uh, really like the fact that how clear I sound with music on, that's not so much OBS, that's more my Blue Yeti microphone, which is this guy right here, I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's that's my Blue, Medi Le Blue Yeti mic, I keep that hanging out there, and um, that's that does a lot of noise cancellation on its own, but then there's also a mumble component that I'm going to actually be introducing in a, in a later tutorial here um, that helps with that. The only kind of stuff that you'll need to worry about in here is if you have a lot of ambient or background noise, you definitely want to consider using push to talk, which works exactly like push to talk in any other online mumble service. So um, it, it's a very good feature, and I, and I highly recommend it if that's the kind of thing that you want to do. There's also a push to talk delay you can play with a little bit, um, which can also help. Um, but yeah, that's, that's really about it. The advanced section, I don't really do too much here. Um, this this is a lot of optimization stuff and also some video x24 preset stuff. I put this on very fast. You can adjust this even further. I haven't found a need to. So it's it's the kind of thing where um, do a little bit more research if you start delving into this stuff because this is definitely some of the more um, the more technical sides of streaming. Uh, this is by the way the uh, a built-in noise gator that I I've uh, I've. I played with a little bit in OBS. As you can see, it's actually detecting really well. Um, I, I actually have opted to use the one in Mumble uh, for a couple reasons, but I did just kind of want to show this um, because it is it is uh, you know it has a, an attack hold release. It has a, an, an envelope that actually works pretty well, and um, it it it's a good system. So if you don't have Mumble or you don't want to get Mumble, um, you can definitely experiment around in here. And uh, basically, what this does is this decides when the microphone is triggered. So only after a certain amount of volume will it actually trigger the mic. And what's also kind of cool is it has an open and a close. So if you talk loud at first, but then talk a little bit softer, you see how it's going under the open threshold? Well, because your close threshold is so much lower, it, it only needs that loudness to activate it. And then you can talk at a lower voice, um, your normal voice, for instance, to continue. So a cool little feature. Um, but that's really about it. Uh, once you get that done, um, your buttons down here will kind of get everything going. Now, it is really important. I did not know this when I started streaming, and one of my amazing mods, Mika Bella, pointed this out to me, and it changed my life. What I was doing all the time was I was staying in the sources section, and I had literally every game, Smite, you can see I have multiple games here, Smite, Cube World, you know, I had, like, literally a sources menu that was a mile and a half long with different stuff. Um, every time I get a game, I'd have to add it to the source, I'd have to move my camera around. Honestly, it was a huge hassle. So what Mika turned me on to was two very important things. One, scenes. Now, scenes are basically groups of sources. And, by the way, the way you do either of these windows is by right-clicking and adding or removing. If you right-click on these windows, this is how you're going to access them. There, there's not really a lot of buttons for these windows, so get in the habit of right-clicking them. Um, so basically, anytime you have a new scene, or, or when you start, both of these windows are empty. You want to start by adding a scene, which will then make kind of like a group of sources. And then the sources are everything that is on your screen. So you see right here, I've got OBS, which is my OBS window, Steam Chat, which actually isn't on, as you notice, my logo down there in the bottom right, my camera, <laughs> hi, and uh, Smite, which I'm not playing. So honestly, I can actually take both of these off. Now the reason you see Smite and Cube World in here is because once you get a default setup, once you have a basic setup, then what you want to do is right click and copy the scene. So this is tutorial two. And see now, I have tutorial and tutorial two. So what I could do in this one is let's say I'm playing a different game. Let's say I'm playing a game where the interface element for health is right where my head is. Well in that game, I'll want my head here. So now all I have to do is when I'm playing tutorial, whatever game that is, there's my head. Well, all of a sudden I want to play the other game. Okay, well now all I have to do is click this. And all of these settings remember. So now as you see, I've got a scene for almost every game I play. So now whenever I play a game, I can just click it, and all of my setting is going to be exactly how I want it to for that game. My head's not going to be in the way of any interface elements. I'm not going to be blocking anything. The input's going to be set up. It's 
fantastic. So really get in the habit of using scenes and it will make your streaming life so much easier. Um, another big thing, and this is kind of the last thing I'm gonna cover in this tutorial, is global sources. Scenes only work, well, they don't only work, but it's much easier to use scenes if you utilize global sources. And basically a global source is kind of like um, a source that you can then use in everything that you can go back to over and over and it will always be the same. So my global sources, for instance, are my camera, my logo, Steam chat, which I basically run to tell people when Twitch is down to head on over to the Steam group, my blocker, which is that little awesome icon that Dego made, and Gordon Freeman, which is unrelated. We'll get to that later. Um, but basically, uh, using the global sources, whenever you go into a source scene, so let's say you know I'm in tutorial two right now, right click, add, instead of adding the normal thing, you go into your global sources, and all of the sources you've added are here. So what that means is, for instance, if you add a camera in every source scene by itself, if I right click add and do camera, it's always going to be a default camera. And I will always have to go through it and do every setting from scratch. My green screen wouldn't be set up. My uh, exposure would be off. All those settings get hosed. But if you make it a global source, it all travels with the item. So it's everything comes from the same place. So I set my camera up once and I'm done. That's it. So honestly, guys, with everything I just told you, you're going to be able to have a good time streaming with OBS. There, everything, I've only, I haven't even been streaming four months now, and it's already gotten to a point where it's intuitive and easy to use, and I highly recommend it um, to anyone who wants to stream. There is another option called XSplit, which is a paid option, allows you to do some more power user feature stuff, like having multiple inputs on the screen and all sorts of stuff, but OBS is free, and it's good, and I recommend it, so there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you guys have any questions, head on over to the twitch.tv slash codecarnage channel, send me a message, coalition.com, send me a message, put up a post. There's a very helpful community there that would love to help you. So hope to see you guys there, and that completes this tutorial. Thank you.